Sahil, uh, as you mentioned, the hadith where Rasulullah said that these are a couple uh, of three surahs. A triad. A triad of three surahs, uh, Bani Israel, which is uh, Al-Isra wal Miraj, Al-Kahf, and then Surah Maryam is also included in this. So we, uh, uh, as you explained, we understand that about the time travel, the significance of time travel through Isra wal Miraj. So what significance does Surah Maryam have for us to understand Al-Kahf? Uh, there's a very clear, uh, very clear, uh, actually, you know, the, the, the place where Allah Ta'ala is uh, talking about how Idris is lifted up in the heavens, okay. uh, which is such a significant uh, entry into the whole realm of all of these concepts. Uh, and the Hadith of Miraj as well. Okay. Uh, uh, Prophet met her Idris in the fourth heaven. Yeah. Uh, that's the only account of her Idris where we get to find out that this is something which is... Okay, so Hazrat Idris went alive? Yeah, he did. Okay, so uh, we don't just have Isa alayhi salam being yeah, yeah. taken alive into the skies? No, 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 not at all. Uh, well, the Christians okay. believe that there are three. Mm -hmm. Muslims believe that there are three. Uh, Christians believe that there are four, actually. Uh, Muslims believe that there are three prophets who actually, you know, traveled the, the skies, the heavens. Uh, Adam alayhi salam, who went, came, came to down. earth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Then uh, Idris alayhi salam that, you know, went up. Okay. So and uh, uh, then uh, Prophet alayhi salam, who went up and then, you know, in his very life came down and Isa is going to come back in the second coming. He, he, he also... The Prophet okay. who actually met <coughs> Prophet Islam during his trip to the, the heavens. Okay. So uh, I personally believe that Nuh is also, uh, you know, the one of the time travelers. Yeah, yeah, literally. Uh, and um, this is a concept which we can actually talk in detail. But since the Surah Maryam does not really go in emphasis of this, so let's not go in there. But it is literally a very, very key element of uh, Surah Maryam because uh, other than the, the fact that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given two bifurcations of different types of prophets in Surah Maryam, the Siddiq Nabi and the, the Rusul Nabi. Mm -hmm. So this is another key uh, which, which opens a lot of doors to our uh, reconstruction of psychology of how to look at mm -hmm. these three. And uh, Idris al-Islam is such a big uh, figure in uh, the Bible. That, you know, books of Enoch, the book of Enoch and the book of Jain, it's all about Idris al-Islam. Okay, so times. Enoch is Idris. Enoch is Idris al-Islam. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you please explain a little bit like how he traveled and well, where we is We have he? a lot of hadith uh, about mm -hmm. uh, Idris al-Islam. Okay. Uh, Idris al-Islam is the, uh, the first person that Allah Ta'ala taught uh, uh, through the pen. Okay. So, which means that he's the first person who actually... Uh, documented knowledge, okay. the whole, you know, uh, era of knowledge of all the human beings started with Idris al -Islam. Okay. Because Adam al -Islam and his sons were giving, getting knowledge to Adam al which was given through I mean, the, the time of creation yeah. of Adam. I mean, the angels asked yeah. of yeah. Uh, what yeah. uh, is he going to do in the and then, uh, you know, there is the whole story of how he taught Asma, Asma al -Husna And that probably went on through word of mouth. Yeah, because he was just a, the, what, the, the, the sixth generation of Adam al -Islam. Okay. Seventh generation is Idris al -Islam. The Seventh okay. patriarch is uh, Idris al -Islam. Okay. And by that time, the population is growing. And uh, Idris al -Islam actually sets the precedence of how to actually convey knowledge now. Okay. And store knowledge. Okay. And uh, he's the one who creates the first library because he's writing so much. And then he gets to find out because an angel is actually narrating all of that knowledge and teaching him and he's writing everything down. This is how Idris al-Islam's life is. Wow, he's uh, the least heard prophets, but he had such a significant role. Yeah, uh, I just missed out on the Christian's fourth uh, prophet, Ilyas al-Islam, is also in their books up in the heavens. Okay, taken alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, both, uh, you know, are up there. Uh, well, Christians don't believe that Isa al Islam is alive, so otherwise yeah. they do, you know, believe in the second coming, so which of yeah. course is going to be. Because yeah. they don't believe that Isa al Islam is going to be born again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it is going to be a second coming. 
because you know they attribute him to a person which is godly so you can do that yeah but the the real question is idris alay salam's presence for afana makan and alayya is aya which in surah maryam actually says that you know he raised him up on a on a destination or a place which is uh, above above where um, afana you know he raised him up yeah you know a higher place yeah um so uh, i think there's a similar word used for isa alay salam also yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Rafa, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, this is something uh, you know, which is so clear in how we understand the concept of uh, this whole trajectory. And if we go into detail of Idris al Islam, then uh, you know, we we find out that uh, there's so much about Idris al Islam which Muslims don't even know about. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that is something which is, in my opinion. which opens a lot of doors towards how the jal is going to be working and uh, uh even if he is not going to use those sort of things but he does have such a clear way of uh uh you know um, making people believe that he is more than just a man you know yeah. what i'm saying because it, at the time of idris al islam uh you know people don't really i don't know why muslim psychology is not really constructed over the fact that adam al islam was a thousand year old mm-hmm. you know and nuh al islam preached for 950 years yeah this is a this is a very very mm-hmm. clear uh problem we need to solve i don't know why we just overlook it somehow we just don't even think about it yeah 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 we do yeah and uh, the real question to ask is if uh, nuh al islam was 950 years old or just preaching time Mm-hmm. then how come he never had uh, more than one generation in his lifetime you know when mm-hmm. he got, got married at 930 no yeah. he didn't right yeah so he got probably he got married at 30 even less those times yeah so he, he should have had about 50 60 generations of uh, his own lineage yeah but he only has his first lineage which he tried to save so this is a this is a very uh, clear indication of how the psychology of a muslim should be because uh, the christian psychology is that he did collect every male and every female that's yeah. not humanly possible not yeah. in this life span anyway in this yeah. life span of 60 yeah. 70 years so i'm not saying that he spent 950 years collecting animals yeah. what i'm saying is that it was a uh, it's not as simple as 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 we just think that those people used to live that old if they were then they you better produce a lot of lineage of this man in his own life uh, lifetime and not just his the people that he's trying to save yeah so that's a lot of people that uh, that you know uh, that are missing from the big picture yeah so that means that uh, these people were constant travelers idris al-islam is known as a traveler and mm-hmm. idris al-islam is explained so many in so many ways not just uh, in the hadith but uh, in the bible in the ethiopian mm-hmm. bible and uh, we have so much text from old civilizations now that clearly talk about Enoch and their his journeys to Saturn and so on so forth. Really? Yeah. Okay. Which is uh that's very surprising to me actually. Yeah, and not just the fact that uh he travels but uh the fact that they used to mention Saturn which has uh, a very peculiar star of David on its north north pole. Star that's, of David. Yeah, it was a hexagon but you know hexagon is placed inside a Yeah. A star of David is a hexagon. Yeah. So, yeah, well, it's placed in the hexagon, isn't it? You know. Yeah. So, you, you have to understand when we think the jal somehow Star of David comes into play anyway. Yeah. I don't want to put that. I, that's a far-fetched idea for in, in, for even for me, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's a lot to do with uh, these 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 things when you come down to. So you mean really like explaining in other things. texts, the mention of Saturn comes. comes into Regarding old civilization uh, yeah, yeah yeah literally uh uh we have wow. uh, the the mayan texts we have okay. the sumerian text we have the akkadian text we have the uh well we don't have any like in the indian text but they do mm. uh you know date as as far as 5 and some thousand years sumerian go back as to 11000 years and they talking about enoch means that uh, adam was way before uh, what we think he was Okay. But Adam was way more than uh, you know we 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 think is 5000 year old history of uh, yeah. man which is not if somebody was 
burying some tablets wow. who were in this planet 11,000 years ago. Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot more than, than we know. Yeah, and that's very strange that there's a Sumerian tablets mentioning the same thing that, a similar thing that we have in Islam. Yeah, yeah. It's not just Sumerian. A lot of Mesopotamian, uh, Mesopotamian uh, text that we have found now talk yeah. about the great flood, which is of the, the you know, flood of Noah. Uh, and his great grandfather, which is Enoch, and you know, there's so much. But I'm not. This actually yeah. opens a door to a lot of discussion. Yeah, a lot more, so, a lot yeah. more. But we, we need to understand, you know, why? Because mm. Miraj is that he's in Bani Israel. Yeah. He meets Idris. You know what I'm saying? Subhanallah. Yeah. And he meets who? Isa alayhi salam. And that just comes right after Surah Kaf, where the whole story of Maryam and Isa alayhi salam comes in, and then all of a sudden wow. Idris is met. And this wow. is this is not a coincidence. As I said, I don't yeah. believe in coincidences. Muslim psychology yeah, should and not. And there's be. a hadith which uh, makes uh, puts all these surahs together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's a okay. it's a big uh, it's a big combination of so many pieces of the puzzle. We have to just put them together. Yeah. And we can actually easily understand that uh, uh, the way to understand the jal yeah. uh, would be far easier because one that you know he's going to claim to be a prophet okay so what can you do as a prophet oh i'm a, such a super prophet i can travel through here and there yeah. so okay so zulkarnan could do that man he was not a prophet yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah this is this is yeah. a way surah kaf is actually helping you get that psychology <clears throat> in place we'll go in detail in surah kaf and then if he says uh i can uh, produce this and that and all of a sudden his followers are going to be getting a lot of prosperity surah kaf talks about that that you know yeah. Uh, in the last 10 ayahs, uh, Surah Kaf is uh, very clear about uh, the people who are disbelievers, yeah. who are all about this world, yeah. uh, are getting to believe that they're on the right path because they're getting so much stuff from this world. Yeah. This is an indication of, uh, of, of you know, what Surah Kaf is actually pointing towards. Yeah. So, uh, there's this, this so much uh, in, in these three surahs that we, we better understand. And then the concept of Siddiq Nabi and uh, uh, Nabi Rusul, which is two different categories of the prophets that come in. And ironically, the Siddiq Nabis are the, uh, you know, those prophets which Allah Ta'ala has shown his big signs to. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So big signs in, in this case of Maharaj, Allah Ta'ala says, I've traveled, yeah. make him through a journey to make uh, him. Uh, see those big signs, not all the yeah. signs, major signs, yeah. of the creations, which are the big hell and, hell and heaven, and you know, uh, the Siddhartha Muntaha and the seven heavens and different different places in uh, in Maharaj. And when I say Surah Bani Israel, I take into account directly the Hadith of Maharaj as well, mm -hmm. because that is not in the Surah Surah of Bani Israel. That's a different Hadith we have to see when Al Salas yeah. is talking about the Maharaj. Hadith explains what happens in the Maharaj. Yeah. So they both come into the same uh, uh, play. Then, uh, you know, those uh, prophets which were mentioned in Surah Maryam, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ironically, uh, Siddiq turns out to be the very uh, word of, you know, uh, the believer mm -hmm. uh, of these signs in Surah Kaf's last ayah is about uh, them not believing in my signs and my rusul. This is, the, I think, the fourth last ayah of Surah Kaf, of how these, these, these disbelievers did not believe in my signs. You know, what, yeah, what, yeah. When Allah Ta'ala says signs and rusul. Yeah. So that means all of those magnificent events which are not explained to science. Yeah. And uh, those are only explained to science because Mehraj is a sign yeah. of uh, Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. Yeah, of how yeah. he took his prophet to yeah. uh, the whole journey in just a matter of a few uh, instances. So these are these are the the, the 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 you know completion of the big story of these three surahs. This triad is speaking to us so mm. loud. Mm. It is showing us so many things. Mm. And uh, when we hear the hadith of the first ten ayah or uh, the hadith of the last ten ayah. Uh, we better understand that we cannot understand the first 10 ayahs or last 10 ayahs unless we know what Surah Kaf is all about. Yeah, actually this was a question in my mind that we've been only like in the Sahih Hadith, we find out that it's the, the first 10 ayahs or the last and the last 10 ayahs that 
a believer has to use uh, as the, the a shield most against the most authentic the hadith is the first ten ayah. First ten ayah. And the first mm. ten ayah is uh, the ninth and tenth ayah is about this ashab kaf Yeah. Whereas everything about like you talked about Zulkarnain and the time travel uh, is mentioned after the ten ayahs. No, time travel is in the first ten ayahs. Okay. Ashab kaf is the eighth, uh, ninth, and tenth ayah. Time travel is of ashab kaf That's where it starts from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, we have to go through all of this yeah. to then uh, have the essence of those ten ayahs. N- yeah, not just the essence, but the use. Yeah, the use of ten these ten ayahs. Yeah, we'll explain in Surah Kaf when we're going to open that uh, of why uh, yeah. going to the mountains was prescribed when you're told to flee in the end of times, yeah. and how mountains have turned out to be an amazing. It's not a coincidence. There are no coincidences. <coughs> so all the portals which were used by angels to come to the prophets were in mountains. Okay. Uh, all the time in portals which in prophets will open in the time of Yajuj Majuj yeah. are going to be in the mountains. Uh, yeah. You know, there's so much about this the Jal period that we better understand from uh, you know when a hadith is trying to save us. Uh, the, those hadith save us. You know, in a lot of ways, physically, of course, that you know, flee and then go to the mountains, be self-sufficient at that time. Uh, you know, uh, then how the jal is going to be working around, and he's going to be going to every single place. He's not going to leave any stone unturned. So, how are these people going to be saved in the mountains? Yeah. You know. So. Um, and wow. This That's is a very important question. Yeah. This is something yeah. which is. Uh, we better if we'll have access to everything. Everything, on Earth, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Maybe Surah Kaf will open those portals mm. only, only in the mountains, because yeah. uh, a Kaf is also in a mountain. This cave was also in a mountain. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they f- did flee in the from the uh, there the Jal at the time that that oppressor, and that very cave was amazing similarity. Yeah, yeah, and it's not a coincidental yeah. similarity. There are no yeah. coincidences. A Muslim belief. Is free of coincidences. Uh, we believe in a God who has seen everything and sees everything from uh, from the beginning till the end of whatever, yeah. even way past heaven yeah. and anything which was way before uh, you know the universe. Yeah. So when when we believe in that kind of Lord, which we do, then there cannot be any coincidence. If a person uh, has seen a movie and just a human <coughs> being. And if he gives me advice about what's going to happen in the movie, it's not a coincidental advice. <laughs> or if he tries wow. to do something wow. uh, which is going to, you know, affect yeah. my life of that movie within the movie, that's not a coincidental event. Because yeah. I'm just talking about just the awareness yeah. attribute of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, yeah. not just the other attributes. Yeah. Just the very fact that he's aware makes all of this universe yeah. free of any coincidences. Yeah. Just the very fact that he's alim. So everything that's mentioned in the Quran, and everything, the hadith, is everything. The way I'm sitting right now in front of you, the time that we're doing this, yeah. there are no coincidences. I'm talking about the tiny little spot inside the depth of the ocean moving. That's not a coincidental thing. This is how how, how perfect this whole machine is, and we have to understand how how to look at it. And uh, if we start believing in anomalies and coincidences, then I'm so sorry. This is this is not going to be a religious debate. Or discussion yeah. because then well actually thank you so much for explaining it this way because all this time like when we go through the Quran there are so many stories so many things that we have to kind of like, unfortunately force our brains to try to take something out of them you know and most of the times we just feel that they are just the moral lessons or things like these you know yeah. but now here you casually you're, placed yeah exactly, or exactly. haphazardly yeah, yeah or done by man yeah you know uh, this is how important our Prophet is, because he actually arranged all of those ayahs himself. Yeah. In his own life, he made sure that every ayah sequencing and every placement of every alphabet yeah. is uh, carefully done in his own yeah. supervision. Yeah. So, uh, and even if, even if he didn't, whoever did that, it was God's will. Yeah. Because this yeah. is this this yeah. is something. So what I'm saying is. Uh, if we believe that there are no coincidences, which we do, not even at the smallest level, then there can never be any coincidence at the Quran level. 
Yeah. And so sort of Bani Israel being in you know in that place Before where Kahaf, right there, yeah Maryam being after the Kahaf, this is not a coincidence a at any level and then all of a sudden Surah Kahf, which has apparently absolutely no visible yeah. uh, you know arsenal against the Jal yeah. becomes our only arsenal against yeah. the Jal yeah. then we better understand this hadith of you know making the Surah Kahf as a triad and using Bani Israel yeah. and Surah Maryam as a combo for, for uh, uh, Surah Al Kahf Okay. And then, then when we're going to go into Surah Kaf, I will bring and invoke the chapter of Idris uh, and uh, the Siddiq Nabi. Um, so, uh, understand, you know, Abu Bakr Siddiq became Siddiq because he actually believed in this, this signs of travel and trajectories. Yeah. So, this is not a so coincidence not that, you know, Siddiq Nabi is mentioned in the yeah. Surah Maryam. The same is wording. this word you're using, Siddiq Nabi? Is it's, it mentioned in the Quran? Yeah, yeah. There are two, no, no, two types, types of, of yeah, ambiyas. prophets. Allah Ta'ala is hmm. classifying these two Subhanallah. types. Okay. Nabi or Siddiq, Nabi or Rusul. So, uh, there are different scholars who talk about different things. But if you look at all of these surahs in combination, you'll find out that uh, first time anybody got to be using this word Siddiq was in the Bani Israel surah. And oh. then uh, all of a sudden it just comes up, popping up in the surah Maryam. Yeah, and probably then, this has been the one of the most significant meanings of the Siddiq Nabi. Which well, yeah, has as far as, yeah, or maybe. yeah, as far as we are concerned, Siddiq is, uh, you know, the ultimate bearer of the truth. Okay. And how can you be an ultimate bearer of the truth if you haven't seen behind the camera all of yeah. those uh, names that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did mention uh, were looking at things behind the camera. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. when Musa went with Khizr and, you know, saw whatever was going on. Yeah. And Musa did a lot more than that, actually. Yeah. Uh, Ibrahim did that, uh, Idris did that, uh, Isa did that, uh, uh, Nabi al-Islam himself did that. Uh, so on. And you'll find out that yeah. when Allah Ta'ala mentions uh, Surah Nabi Rusul, you'll find out that those were amazingly, and not coincidentally, but amazingly those prophets which do not have any <coughs> recollection of these sort of yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are totally different types of prophets. Uh, I'm not ranking them, of course. There's no point. There's no psychological way of us ranking them, different, uh, different uh, in, in a different way. But we can see the use of this word in a very clear way. That you know, this is something which we have to be. In other words, if I have to give one liner of why Surah Maryam is so important, Siddiq are those people will be saved from the jal because. They will be believing in a totally different way of looking at uh, all this stuff, and it will be meaningless of what the Jal is doing. Subhanallah. And uh, <coughs> the prophecies of those people yeah. who are go the people of heaven in the times of the Jal yeah. are the, the people who are literally doing what Abu Bakr Siddiq was doing to the Arabs. Said, "Yeah, I believe that this is the real truth." Subhanallah. Those people. For example, that man who is, will be chopped by the exactly. The chainsaw. I was about to mention that. Yeah. He is the Siddiq. Yeah. He's claiming over and over that I am Iman, I testify, I testify that you are a, a liar and my prophet was yeah. the, uh, w w w was true about... Uh, Even after he receives life, yeah, he knows time, that this yeah. is the only that this is the attribute that's only, uh, like Allah holds this attribute. He should be become a believer in the Jal, yeah. but instead he rejects and denies that yeah. very attribute and says, now... I have stronger faith that you are the Jal. Because he says something which Abu Bakr Siddiq said. Yeah. He said, because my Prophet, my prophet. Al Islam already told so, us yeah. that this is going to happen and I did not know it was going to be me. Subhanallah. Yeah. So he literally verbatim uses the same psychology, the sequence and the stress of words which Abu Bakr Siddiq said. So I believe in my, 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 my Prophet has said. Subhanallah. You know, so this is something which is not a coincidence at any level. So, Siddiqs are going to be saved in the times of the Jal, just like Siddiqs were created in the, uh, the time when these surahs were, you know, being revealed. Thank you so much, Sahil. May Allah make us among the Siddiq or the believers Amen. that will be saved from the fitna of the Jal. Inshallah, I'll be seeing you again in our next coming episodes Inshallah. where we're going to start Surah Kahf. Yeah.